A defibrillator is a machine which could save the life of somebody in cardiac arrest. There are many different makes and models of defibrillator and they come in different shapes and sizes. But they all have similar basic functions. They consist of a main unit and pads in a packet which attach to the unit by wires. The defibrillator is attached to a person's body using the sticky pads. This machine is then able to provide an electrical shock to a patient if required. This electrical shock is called defibrillation and is used to correct an abnormal heart rhythm. An automated external defibrillator, or AED, is a defibrillator which is able to interpret electrical activity in the heart, like an ECG monitor, and then the machine can decide if an electrical shock is required. The purpose of the electrical shock is to correct an abnormal heart rhythm back to a normal heart rhythm. An AED will not allow for a shock to be delivered if the machine decides that one isn't required. When the heart beats it relies on a correct sequence of electrical activity in order to contract effectively. The heart is made up of four chambers, the left and right atria which contract first, when electrical activity is normal, these will contract together. This is then followed by the left and right ventricles. Again, if electrical activity is normal, these will also contract together. So a normal heartbeat will have the left and right atria contracting together, followed by the left and right ventricles. If the electrical activity of the heart is affected and is no longer coordinated, this will affect the heart's ability to perform its main function, which is to pump blood around the body. Here we can see a heart where the electrical activity is correct and coordinated. If the heart rate becomes too quick, this can sometimes mean the ventricles don't have time to fill, and therefore cannot pump enough blood out when they contract. If the electrical activity becomes uncoordinated, this produces no pumping action or blood flow at all. This uncoordinated rhythm can be interpreted electrically as seen here, and this is known as fibrillation. This rhythm predominantly involves the muscles of the ventricles, so it's called ventricular fibrillation, or VF. A larger electrical shock can stop all of these uncoordinated electrical impulses. This can sometimes return the heart back to its normal coordinated rhythm. There are AEDs that are available for members of the public to retrieve and use if required. These are known as Community Public Access Defibrillators. If they are registered with their ambulance service, when someone calls an ambulance for someone who may need a defibrillator, they will be told if there is one nearby. Usually, they will be advised to send someone else to retrieve the AED so that someone can stay with the patient and start CPR. If there is a code required to access the AED, the ambulance service should have and provide this information. A first responder or ambulance crew will also bring a defibrillator as part of their kit. Common myths about defibrillation. A defibrillator does not replace the need to do CPR. Anybody can use an AED, you do not have to be trained. You cannot cause harm to somebody using an AED. It won't allow you to shock somebody who doesn't need it. If there is someone who isn't breathing and an ambulance has been called, here's how to use an AED. Kneel close to the patient, turn on the AED, and follow the instructions. Remove all clothing from patient's chest. Pull red handle to reveal pads. Look at pictures on pads. For children under 8 or under 25 kilograms, there may be a different set of pads. 
These will also be positioned differently as shown. Apply pads to bare skin exactly as shown in the pictures. Press pads firmly. Do not touch patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Everyone clear. Press flashing button. Shock delivered. Provide chest compressions to the beat. The heel of one hand should be in center of chest. The other hand should be on top of first hand. Push down hard at least five centimeters. The machine may decide that a shock is not required after it has analyzed. In this case, continue performing CPR. Continue to follow the defibrillator's instructions, providing further shocks if required. If there are two or more people to help, one person should be doing chest compressions whilst the defibrillator is retrieved and prepared. Continue to follow the defibrillator's instructions, again providing further shocks if required.